All right, what's this? You might be looking at it and you're thinking that's a banana, but no, it's not a banana. I mean, it is a banana, but it also holds potentially the solutions to your problems. If you're one of the skaters that complains about low energy, slow recovery, feeling heavy in your board, aches and pains, then this banana, mate, might hold the answers to what you need. So, many skaters, they try and handle their issues with nutrition, right? I mean, it kind of makes sense that you feel like shit if you're eating shit. But many skaters that try and eat better and try and eat healthier have exactly the same problems. So in this video, I'm going to be going over why that is along with introducing one tool, one change in the way that you think about food to make sure that you're giving your body everything it needs to power your skating, to power your sessions, and for you to feel good and on point when you're on and off your board. Alright, so we're going to start off this video with a complex equation, which is what is the difference between these two items right here? Well, if you're amongst the intelligent skaters out there, you're going to say, this banana peel has a banana in it, but this one doesn't. And yes, you're exactly right. So, the thing about this banana is it's a physical thing, right? We can apply the classic banana flip verification method to prove that this banana is a physical item. But what is it made up of? Well, it's made up of little pieces or nutrients. So all these different nutrients you can think of as different tools that your body's going to use to do different jobs. So maybe one tool is going to give your body the energy it needs to skate. Maybe another tool is going to help repair some of that damage that you've accumulated during your session. Basically, all the foods that we eat are going to have different tools within them that are going to do different jobs that will help us skate or feel on point on and off our board. So if we know which jobs our body needs to do to skate and feel on point, and we know the tools it needs to do those jobs, and we know which foods are going to give us those tools for those jobs, we can make sure that the food that we're eating is going to be powering our skating, powering our recovery, our energy levels, and just helping us feel more on point on and off our boards. All right, so let's go over what these tools are. So for the purpose of this video, I've split them up into six main tools that are gonna have the biggest impact on your skating and how you feel. Now, I'm not gonna go deep into each of these tools because I've already done videos on every single one. And there's also a free ebook with a lot of different nutrition information that you can get, which I'll link down in the description below. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna blast through them, but just kind of give you an overview of how you can use each tool to help your skating. I bet at the end of the video as well, I'm gonna go over some simple ways that you can start to integrate these tools into your life and get some changes in the way you skate and feel. So, breaking them down, we've got protein, carbs, water, salt, fat, and micronutrients. The first one, we got protein. Protein, just think recovery and also maintaining your muscle because as your body's gonna be repairing all that damage from your skating, if you're not giving it to your body from your diet, it's gonna break down other muscles and other tissues to do the repair job, so you're gonna end up losing muscle. So it's essential for recovery, muscle maintenance, maybe muscle growth as well, if that's what you're into. If you wanna get nice and tonk, mate. So for carbohydrates, just think energy for those more intense, high power movements when you're skating, like actually doing tricks, but also giving your body the energy it needs to repair the damage from your sessions. So water and salt, pretty much everything in your body really, but just think like skate performance, health, maintaining body temperature, and just keeping all of those different systems functioning in your body that the other tools are gonna to rely on. Same pretty much goes for fat and micronutrients. It's like, yeah, fat supplies energy for those more low intensity movements, like pushing around, chilling on the sofa, taking a shit, unless it's an intense one. But these are also gonna just be involved in like general health, keeping those other systems functioning. They're not gonna have so much of a direct impact on skating itself. So when do we wanna get these tools in? Well, for all of them, the most important thing by far is basically just that you're giving your body enough of each one for you personally. That's far more important than like specific timings for any of them. So before you go skate, you don't really need to make any specific changes if you've managed to get in a normal meal at least a couple of hours before the session. The closer you get to the session, the less you're gonna to wanna to eat because your body's not gonna be able to digest that food and like access the food and it's gonna make you feel like more sluggy. So if you haven't eaten before the session or you don't have much time, you're gonna to wanna to think just fast digesting carbs and water, salt, and then focusing on nutrition during your sessions and after the sessions as well. So for the tools that you should be getting in during your sessions that are up to 60 to 90 minutes long, you really just need to think like water, really. Unless you haven't eaten before, then maybe getting some carbohydrates as well. I mean, for the sessions that are longer than that, you're gonna definitely want to think carbohydrates regularly throughout the session to just keep your energy tanks stocked up and to prolong fatigue. If you want to be like the boss of the game and really like, you know, top of the nutrition class, then getting into protein as well at the same time as you get in carbohydrates is going to be good. Salt, if it's a real sweaty one, if you do just drip in, get in some extra salt as well. And fat and micronutrients, no worries, don't even think about those during your session. Don't think about them, stop thinking about them. If you're failing your tricks, if you're thinking about the fats that you need, 
you think about how I'm fit. So the only things that you really need to like definitely get in at the end of the session is water, unless you haven't eaten before you've gone for a skate or you've gone for like a really long session and it's been a while since you've actually eaten. In those situations, you're gonna to wanna to get in basically like a normal meal, really. Making you're sure you're getting in some carbohydrates, some protein, and if you're going for a normal meal, might as well just get some fat and micronutrients in there as well. Tick all the boxes. So when might you need to increase or decrease the amount of each of these tools you get in? Well, for protein, you always just want to hit baseline and just think if you're going for really long, intense sessions or there's a lot of slams, a lot of impacts, then you're going to up your protein needs just because your body's going to have more to repair and it's going to need more of that tool to do that. So the same is going to apply for carbohydrates and fats as well. And if you've done the opposite, if it's a real chilled session, then you're going to lower the amount of carbohydrate fat, you're not going to need as much energy. So for water and salt as well, making sure you're hitting baseline is key. So just drinking regularly throughout the day when you're thirsty and getting some salt in with your meals. But then if you go for skate sessions and it's like really hot and sweaty, then you're going to want to get in some extra water and some extra salt as well to make sure that you stay hydrated and reduce your body overheating during the sessions. And for micronutrients, you're never going to really need to up or decrease the amount unless you've got some like specific issue that you're trying to solve with micronutrients for pretty much most people in most situations just hitting baseline is the kit. So now we're just going to finish off with a few quick little first steps that you can start doing to apply that stuff that I just went over to get those tools in your diet. So number one is literally just figuring out how much you personally need of each of those tools. Number two, figure out which foods are high in each of those tools so you can easily build your place making sure that you're giving your body all of the different tools that it needs from those different foods. And number three is just fucking do it mate. So just start with some simple little change. Don't try and change everything at once. Pick like one thing, maybe adding some protein to your meals for example. You might start off by literally just figuring out how much protein you personally need, picking some foods that you like and then adding just like one or two portions of that food to breakfast, to lunch, whatever it might be, and then just build on top of that as you go. So hopefully that made it clear that food isn't just about whether it tastes good or if it's considered healthy, that it's gonna be giving you everything that you need to scale and function on point. Now, nah, mate, there are different tools that your body gets from all these different types of foods to do all of these different jobs that are gonna help you feel energized, that are gonna help you recover good, feel more light on your board, get rid of aches and pains, and if you know what these tools are and you know where to get them from, you can easily just make better choices to enhance your meals and make sure that they're powering your skating. So click some of these videos on the screen. They're gonna go deeper into the tools that I went over in this video. And if you've got any questions, mate, drop them down below. If you wanna drop a little fire emoji, maybe a little eggplant and some water splash emojis, drop them down below. If you've got any videos that you'd like me to do as well, drop those comments down below. Let me know and subscribe for everything that's going to improve how you skate and how you film your skate. So that's it. That's it for this one. This is really difficult because this guy's sitting right here. <laughs>